Well, good morning. Uh, it is an extremely beautiful morning on a day like this. Uh, Diane and I went out for a walk early, went to our favorite coffee shop, which is uh, our children a couple blocks away. And then I shoveled and blew snow and cleared snow. And I feel sorry for all uh, of my friends and relatives in Texas who can't enjoy this beautiful day today. It's it. It's just too bad. This is as close to heaven as you get. And um, just to let you know, uh, it, it is true heartfelt um, sadness that you have to live where you do. Uh, but God is gracious and loving to some of us, and uh, others live in Texas. So that's just kind of a um, word out to my kids and stuff down there who often tell me of how beautiful it is down there and their sunshine and their green grass and stuff. Uh, this is truly God's country. So, a little personal stuff aside, we want to get going on our devotional this morning. And uh, I'm going to be in Lamentations and end in Hebrews. Friday there won't be a devotional. That's uh, New Year's Day. And... Um, I'll be taking that off and then uh, working and preparing, well, taking it off from devotionals, not off from off uh, of anything, but uh, but working on uh, the upcoming year, start of the year's devotionals. And I, right at the moment, I'm feeling very strongly led to work through some of the uh, uh, Book of Acts and the circumstances that happen in there in the early church and how uh, God moved through the Spirit and um, how they existed within a, uh, a culture that was not uh, friendly or conducive to uh, the Christian faith, and yet they overturned their world as it was in that day. And hopefully there'll be words of encouragement for you and I. Um, let me read in uh, Lamentations 3, uh, verse 37 to 41. Who has spoken, and it came to pass, that the Lord has commanded, unless the Lord has commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad come? Why should a living man complain? a man about the punishment of his sins. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven. Um, and verse 42 fits in there. It says, we have transgressed and rebelled and you have not forgiven. So the church, uh, Israel, the church of the Old Testament, was in a process at this point of experiencing the judgment of God for their rebellion. And of course, there was always grumbling and complaining when bad times come upon us. And also it must be understood that uh, when God deals with his people, uh, both the righteous and the unrighteous will experience this discomfort and struggle. Uh, it's, it'll have a different uh, effect on the heart and the soul. And so the first thing we see is uh, in these texts is that God takes sovereign responsibility for all that's happening. And uh, we have to be willing to go along with that. Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad come? Sometimes in a church, uh, we're afraid to credit uh, the negative stuff of life and the bad stuff to the sovereign, powerful authority hand of God, and, and we shouldn't be. He does not discipline his children to crush them, but he disciplines them for their good, that he might uh, develop in them the fruit of righteousness will be uh, a peace and contentment in their hearts uh, as they go through life. 
And so rather than draw back from the Lord when things are tough or become bitter uh, and complain and grumble, the scripture gives us a different exhortation. What does it exhort you and I to do? Well, if we look back at this text, um, starts out in verse 40, let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. When uh, something like the pandemic comes upon us, whether real or perceived, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, you and I are, are feeling the negative, uh, harsh context of what's going on in the pandemic. Um, whether the conspiracy theory that it's all fake uh, at one extreme or and it's, a, it's a method by which uh, the government just wants to control us and dominate us is true or not. It doesn't matter uh, when it comes to what you and I are experiencing. Okay. Uh, this text says here, let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. So if our response to what's going on is grumbling and complaint and dissatisfaction and discontent, then uh, the scriptures encourage us to test ourselves, examine ourselves, take a good look through the lens of the Holy Spirit who indwells us, and see where it is that we have lost sight of who our sovereign Lord and Savior is, that we have lost sight that our Heavenly Father disciplines us according to His will, which is perfect, and His knowledge, which is absolute and complete. And, uh, and uh, then let us return to the Lord. Now, if this has come upon you, and, and you haven't gone into discontent or complaint, then the peace of God has kept you safe, well, then you, you still are with the Lord. So this is a challenge to the church, I believe, today even, that if the world pandemic with the political crisis and the economic crisis is something that has disturbed you to the point where your fellowship with God and with those in the church has been disrupted, then examine yourselves. Let the Spirit of God reveal where you have strayed and return to the Lord who loves you, knowing that all this is at his hand. Okay? Now, there are those who say, well, I'm not going to go back to God. If God's causing this, I'm not going to go to him. Why would I go to him if he's the one causing my hurt? That That's a true conclusion when it's between humans, uh, two degrees. So if I'm abusing somebody, that abused person should not continue to submit to me and be abused. If I'm a father, parent, uh, disciplining my children for their good, to train them to know good and evil, to train them self into self-discipline, that they might mature and grow up and, and be able to take care of themselves, well, then they even though I might discipline them, they should still draw near to me because my end goal is their maturity. Well, God, our Father in heaven, disciplines us for our good that we might share in his holiness. And so when we are in discontent and we are in, uh, in confusion and we are uh, in grumbling and complaining, if not against God, even against the system around us. If, if all of our anger and our discontent is even towards other people in the system around us, uh, if we believe that God is sovereign in what is going on, then it's also a discontent and a grumbling against God. And we need to uh, repent of that and return to him. That's where that word return and repentance Inner mesh for you and I. Then in verse 41, it says, let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven. Lifting up the heart and the hand uh, 
breaks down for me into three different areas. One, it, it breaks down in submission. So when I recognize by examining myself where I've gone astray and I return to the Lord, the raised hands of submission to God uh, come into focus. The next thing that uh, raised hands uh, speak to me about is adoring my Father in heaven. Even with the circumstances that are around us, even with the pandemic and the political crisis and the potential for what might happen in the future, whether we have Trump as president or Biden as president for the next four years, um, regardless of that, half of the country might going to be upset, okay? It's going to be part of those halves that uh, want to do something to force change it on either side. Uh, regardless of all that insecurity and that turmoil that could be lying ahead, our Heavenly Father is still in control and can be worshipped and adored no matter what the circumstances of life. As a matter of fact, the more uh, terrible those circumstances are, the more the adoration of our God is due him. When we look at the life of Job, after having lost everything, his homes, his crops, and his children, he worshiped God, he bowed down and worshiped God. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Essentially what uh, Jeremiah is saying in the book of Lamentations and what we need to believe is true of who our God is. And then thirdly, raised hands our hands of petition. Because God just doesn't want us uh, passively uh, submitting to all that goes around us. No. He wants us to come in prayer to him and petition him. Tell him the desires of our heart, even as we seek to know what his will is and, uh, and having a desire of heart to submit to his will, whether difficult or easy. Uh, and so uh, when it says, let us examine ourselves, uh, I believe that uh, there is great hope for you and I in our present day. Now I'd like to jump us over to Hebrews because there's a similar sounding phraseology in Hebrews. In uh, chapter 10, beginning in verse 22, let us draw near with a heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you say the day, see the day drawing near. So we have another bunch of lettuce, lettuce that we had, uh, kind of like a salad, uh, from uh, the Book of Lamentations. Now, the Lamentations was Old Covenant. And even in the Old Covenant, with the shadow and the types of the real, with the animal sacrifices and the temple worship, and, and the very much limitation on not being able to be clean from your sin, but merely to have your sin covered by the blood of animals, you and I live in a time where the blood of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, cleanses from sin. It just doesn't cover it up so that we have to go back year after year. It cleanses it, takes it away, it washes it away. It delivers us from it. And so when we read in Hebrews, which is what I see as a kind of a counterpart to what we just read in Jeremiah, the fullness and the beauty of what Hebrews have is so much greater. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Let us draw near. Return to the Lord, because we return to the Lord through the blood of Christ, not the blood of animals. It is uh, infinitely more uh, precious and efficacious in our coming before our Father in heaven. Let us consider then, after we have returned to the Lord, how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting the meeting together. 
Well, some might say, well, precisely. Uh, not being able to gather uh, on Sunday morning is a violation of the scripture commanding us to meet together. Well, um, that can be true, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be true. A Zoom meeting, which we've been holding our church services on, if approached uh, with uh, the Spirit of God, which is in each of us who have confessed Jesus as Lord, which is prepared for uh, the day and the evening before through prayer and scripture and the opening of our hearts to uh, be used by the Spirit of God and, uh, and joined in together, even though it, it is less than optimal and it has many uh, inconveniences to it. That kind of a meeting is just as much getting together and fulfilling the scripture as being in person. Okay. In, in some ways, uh, there is a blessing to it. I remember uh, talking with uh, Bill from Reed Ministries, and they have been able to connect through something like this through a wide group of different countries that would have been uh, impossible any other way simply because traveling would be that difficult. Uh, and so um, there is uh, an ability through the Zoom meetings we've been meeting that absolutely fulfills the scripture. Uh, many years ago for a 10 year period of time, my wife, Diana's disability, kept her from being able to come to church for 10 years of time. Uh, 10 years, she was not able to make a church service. Um, and, and yet, uh, different uh, ladies in the church reached out to her. We had some things in the home. I spent time in her, with her and we together read scripture and read books. And we actually developed some habits through that that have uh, served us well. Uh, for uh, the other 30 some years of our ministry together, uh, since we've been at this about 40 some years. Uh, and, um, and so she was limited, but still able to uh, fulfill this scripture of not neglecting to get together with the body. As a matter of fact, we can uh, go to a Sunday service it can be the obligatory training of our Christian life culture. We go in, we sit in the same place, we talk to the same people, or we don't talk to hardly anybody. Uh, we sing the songs, we uh, listen to the prayers, we listen to the teaching, sometimes intently, other times not. I remember one time uh, as I was preaching, I watched a mother and daughter uh, that one of them reached into their purse, brought out some photos they had of stuff, and they were just sitting there together uh, looking through these photos in their purse while I was preaching the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you see people sleeping when you're preaching the Word of God. Uh, you know, I, that kind of a scenario uh, does not fulfill Hebrews Matter of fact, a Zoom meeting where the heart is prepared uh, through prayer and through a desire to serve the body and love the body and speak into the body with prayer or exhortation or however the Holy Spirit would want to manifest himself to you is infinitely more fulfilling of that scripture than, uh, than the obligatory uh, coming to church on a Sunday uh, morning and going through the style of culture worship that you are comfortable and used to. Now, having said all that, being in person where one prepares their heart in prayer and uh, meditation of the word and comes with a intent to uh, minister to the body, to be able to be sitting across from somebody and drinking coffee and uh, be able to talk about their life and stop and say, well, let me pray over you with that, okay? And let me do that with this, right at this moment while that's going on. All of that is, is um, 
is infinitely better than a Zoom meeting. Uh, okay, I understand that. But you understand it is not the format, first and foremost, that we should be concerned about. It's the heart. And it's the preparation through the power of the Spirit. The Spirit is not limited by Zoom or Google, uh, whatever they have on their variation of it, or YouTube. Um, the Spirit is limited by you and I when we are not submitted to God, we are not content in the circumstances of our life, and we are not looking to encourage one another to love and good deeds, but instead we are critical and we are withdrawing or we are uh, condemning of those around us who aren't doing what we think is extremely important to us that they should be doing. Uh, so we need to deal with grace and love and mercy with one another. And this pandemic time will pass. All things pass. All things change, okay? Sometimes they change for the better, sometimes they even change for the worse. Uh, but our, our eldest daughter, when she was little, for some reason picked up on a phrase that she would say to us every once in a while, this too shall pass. Um, and, you know, she was right. Everything that we have gone through in our life has changed. And many of the bad things have passed. Many of the good things have passed. And new things have come. There will be an end to the pandemic. Let us pray that when we come to the end and, and we can establish a norm of what our lives are like in worshiping and serving God, will have not devoured one another beforehand. Okay? Because there's a danger in that. So I hope your New Year's uh, Eve and New Year's Day are wonderfully blessed days as today. And we'll see you on Monday morning in January 2021.